my wonderful hostesses with the mostesses. Sure, we'll go with that. My in-laws home. Um, how's everybody doing? Happy Monday. Uh, I would like to say that I had a really relaxing weekend, but that would not be true at all. I uh, was still packing Saturday and then left for the airport mid-morning on Sunday, traveled most of the day Sunday. I will say that my weekend was finished off with the best carne asada I can imagine. The, the Mexican food here in Phoenix is top notch, top notch. And so I try to eat as much of it as I can when I come down here. Um, I'm going to come and pull up my feeds here and we are going to uh, hang out for a few minutes. Tonight we are going to talk about presser feet. Um, I realize that this is a topic that I have covered before, but I think that it is, it's important enough to, you know, be worth repeating. So that's, that's what we're going to do. Um, let me pull up my feeds here. I had a fantastic uh, class today, part one of a two-part series finishing up tomorrow at a quilter's oasis in Mesa, Arizona. Um, it was fantastic. I had 11 students. I, I just love, I think I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. I just love new quilters. They are, they think everything you do is like magic. <laughs> Ooh, ah. <laughs> If you ever need a an ego boost, hang out with some new quilters and they're going to be like, how do you get a perfectly straight seam or that perfect seam allowance? Practice. Confidence and practice. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. All right. Let's say hi to some friends. Polly, my, um, my honorary uh, UK viewer is in Scotland this week versus UK. Uh, she did... She said, hope everyone had a good weekend. Hi, Polly. Missy is on from Redmond, Washington. Pam's on from Maine. And Char is on from Australia. Good morning, Char. It is um, early, or not early, mid-morning in Australia. Jen Jen is on. Hello, hello. Koala bears. I like your koala bear emoji. Char, that is so cute. Julie Campbell's on from Tennessee. She said, first shingle shot and had side effects so bad. I'm not sure my, why my doctor won't let me pull up. Well, if you had bad side effects, that's probably why. All right, let me drill in here to the live. Okay, let's see here. Kathy's on from East Texas. Hi, sweetheart. Uh, Lisa Meadows is on. Sandy Reese is on. Bunny's on. Janet Quilter is on. Hello from New York City. Dorina, which Mexican restaurant is your fave, she says. All right, this is a rabbit hole I can go down all day long. So I stay out in East Valley, east of Mesa, and, and for, so local, there's a place called Los Gringos Locos. They have, their, their carne asada is an actual steak that is marinated. Y'all, oh my gosh, it's making my mouth water just talking about it. So Los Gringos Locos, East Valley, if I'm closer to where we used to live in Scottsdale, Los Olivos in Old Town, hands down, tortilla soup. I would order tortilla soup with fresh cut avocados and they would do a fresh flour tortilla with butter on the side. You're welcome. If you guys live here, you're welcome. And then if I was North Cave Creek had El Encanto and they have like a turtle pond and also the best carne asada I've ever had in my entire life. So there you go. Those are my three Valley recommendations. Uh, Kathy's on from SoCal. Karen's on from Ohio. Hi, Karen. Deanna's on from Napa Vine. Beth is on from <laughs> Chilly Wet San Antonio. I thought you left Chilly and Wet behind in Minnesota. Having fun meeting and sewing with other snowbirds. Today we went to a sewing machine repair shop, which had several featherweights for sale. Nice. Bernadette is on from Canada. Uh, Janet Quilter in New York says, I was wondering if your machine isn't used for a while. Say format, should you oil it before using? Excellent question, Janet. Yes, you should. At bare minimum, you're going to hit the every eight-hour oil holes in that machine before you start using it. That's an excellent question. Sandy Reese says, question, what do I clean the inside of the tray of my 301? It has gunk and I have to replace the felt. Um, so you can use on the tray, on the 301, you're talking about the drip pan, I'm assuming the bottom. You can use naphtha. You can pour a little bit in, let it sit for a minute, and then wipe it off with a rag that you don't care about because trust me, you're going to be throwing it away. Um, you can also pick up, we have 
new drip pans available for sale as well as the 221, 222s. They don't come with adhesive on the back of them. So at factory, they would use rubber cement and that's what we encourage people to use on the 301 drip pans also. Beth says, can't listen now as we are part of a potluck at the resort park. We'll watch later. Okay, girl. Have fun, girls. Lisa Smith is on from South Georgia. I gotta get out to Arizona. Yes, you do. <laughs> uh, Bernice is on from South Dakota. Hello. And Lynn is on from Tennessee. All right. And Debbie Ellen Sinclair is on from Kentucky. I see you, Christine. Let's see, Christine. Oh, okay. Do, 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 do. All right. So, yes, it's not sip and so, but yes, I am drinking. I am technically off of work and I am teaching all week this week. So let the wine flow. All right, let's talk about presser feet. All right, so uh, I have talked about this before. So if I sound like a broken record, I'm sorry. <gasps> Trina, I miss you, hello. Um, the feet that came with your featherweight were not the ones that were intended for quilting from factory. In fact, these machines were created back in the day as mending machines and clothing construction machines. So all of the feet that would have come from factory with your machine is meant for one or the other. Hello, Sheila Kilgore from Idaho. <gasps> Sheila, my Sheila. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> it was zero degrees this morning. Sheila, don't be mad at me, but it was 66 here in Arizona this afternoon glorious. My in-laws are whining about how cold it is. My father-in-law is shivering behind the counter. Okay, he's fine. <laughs> Send help. It's 66. Give me a break. <laughs> no sympathy from the North Idahoian here. No sympathy. So I'm going to show you guys what all these are, and I'm going to tell you what they're for. If you're curious about how they're used, I would encourage you to check out my series that I did with my dear friend Alicia from Featherweight 38. We did a series together called Attachment Wednesdays under the Featherweight Doctor channel. And you can look and see, um, it's like Lucy and Ethel were trying to figure out how to use these things. Both, uh, um, both Alicia and I are, <laughs> Sandy Reese says you're cute. <laughs> to death. Uh, both of us are quilters, not clothing constructors. So it's a, it's a little funny. It's like Lucy and Ethel at the cake making factory trying to make all the cakes. Um, but we do a video on, on how to demo and how they're used. So check it out if you're curious. So let's start with this big guy. This one here is called the ruffler. So this would have been very popular on little girls dresses or bottom of skirts or tablecloths back in the day. So this is the ruffler. So there were actually, I'm going to show you six attachments that would have come with your featherweight from factory. So this is number one, the ruffler. Um, this one is called the bias binder. It also, some of them came with the multi-slotted bias binder, which looks a little like this, but it has a long stick and two prongs that stick off of it. It's for feeding the bias tape into it. I used this a ton during COVID when we were making masks. If people didn't want the elastic over the ear, it made the bias tape that went around like a surgical mask. So this is the bias binder. This got a lot of attention um, during COVID. <gasps> Hi, Denise. <laughs> From cold, from cold Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, so that's, so we have one, two, three is the shearing gathering foot. It has a little hole in the middle. It's a little deeper on the bottom side. This would have come with your machine from factory. This is called the rolled hammer. <clears throat> Another original attachment. This is called the adjustable hammer. So this is for doing like you know, that blanket edging on the end, you, it, it's adjustable. So you can, you know, make accommodations for different size bias binding on your edge of your quilt. And then this is the edge stitcher. So this would have been number six. So I have, I believe it or not, folks, there were no featherweights in my class today. I would have probably lost a bit about that. There's always at least one, but these were all modern machines. But just for those of you who have the featherweight, 
The foot that would have come with your machine, this one is the one that probably is sitting on it. This is the four millimeter foot for making a French cuff or a hem. And it is not a quarter inch seam allowance foot. So if this, if you've been quilting with this foot, your seams are not matching up. There's no way. And there's no way that the blocks are coming out the size that they're supposed to be. So there are, <laughs> yeah, you should have all of Mary's attachments, Della, for sure. So, yeah, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. In Australia, Char said it was 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, good Lord. So if you're, if you're looking for a quarter inch foot, we have them on our website. We have two different styles, one with a guide, one without a guide. Um, I think one of them might be out of stock right now, but there's more showing up this week while I'm away. So you definitely want to check that out if for those quilters who are using their feather weights for their piecing machine. A quarter inch foot makes a huge difference, huge difference in the quality of your seams. The other thing that makes a big difference, hi Cindy Hinkle, um, is that uh, darning foot. So during the class today, we did our first free motion lesson. We talked about the differences between the open and the closed toed darning feet in terms of bringing threads up and starting lines of quilting. The featherweight does have a aftermarket foot. I think we sell these for, I think like $12 on our machine, on our, our website, featherweightdoctor.com. They work like a charm. Um, the purpose of a darning foot is to hold the fabric under the needle, but not press down like a presser foot. So that way it's pinched and you can't kind of fluidly move the fabric under the needle. So the bend on this is at the elbow. So you can see it bends down and it holds the fabric just perfect. Odie, you did miss dad. <laughs> what is this? Uh, oh, thanks, Lisa. Thank you for the link, Lisa. Uh, do, 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 do. Lisa Smith, Ve Vegemite. Vegemite. I think that's what she's trying to say. Hi. <laughs> All right. So this is the darning foot that I like. There is another one that we carry on the website that has more of a visible spring on it, but it really works better on the 222s for some reason and not the 221s. Two um, the other thing that the Featherweight uh, has as a new and modern presser feet for doing modern techniques is the walking foot for doing straight quilting. So as I explained to my class this morning, the reason why you want a walking foot while you're doing straight quilting uh, on any machine is because if you've ever tried to quilt anything without having a walking foot, uh, you can you the fabric on the top looks great, and then when you flip it over, the fabric on the bottom looks like it's all puckered and tucked. It's because when you have multiple layers a fabric like a quilt sandwich. Um, the bottom feed dogs are moving the fabric at a higher rate of speed than the top, uh, but you can't see it, obviously, because you're only looking at the sandwich from the top. So having a walking foot and this little alligator arm hooks onto the needle changer bar and it literally operates the upper set of feed dogs. That way all layers of fabric are moving through the needle at the same rate of speed, therefore reducing the ability to have the puckers and tucks on the bottom that you won't be able to see until you're done. <laughs> Let's see here. Thank you, Lisa, for the link. Lucy's skit about the tonic. I don't know what that is. Um, Beth says, Last time you mentioned, yes, to get a cell, to do, to do a plan, to send it in an email letter. Super. Yes, we have plans to make. Beth, winky face. Um, okay, Deanna's on. Thank you so much. As a newbie collector, I was lost on these attachments. Oh, this answered a lot of my questions. Super. Good. Uh, oh, Molly's on. Hi, Molly. I have to watch this again on my PC so I can see those feet. Absolutely. Uh, Char, do, do, do. let's see Tammy says love the show all the way from West Virginia first time I've caught it live <gasps> Tammy welcome welcome to the show <laughs> I have I have my uh my UK and my Australian ladies have uh captured my my chat over on YouTube <laughs> it's a rabbit hole I'm not going to get lost in <laughs> so this week ahead of me in Arizona I have full workshops Every day, um, tomorrow I'm back for part two of the beginning machine quilting class with my fantastic ladies today at a quilter's oasis. Um, then I'm at a quilter's oasis on Wednesday for a quilt as you go seminar, a one day seminar. I'm really looking forward to that. And then uh, Thursday is modern quilting in Scottsdale, also a full workshop. 
Um, and then Friday is my uh, featherweight workshop at a quilter's oasis. And then I get on a plane and fall straight on my face. <laughs> I'm trying to pace myself with the words because by day four of teaching, my vocal cords start to feel a little strained and I definitely need to make sure I have all of my, uh, all of my energy and vocal range for an 11 person featherweight workshop at a quilter's oasis on Friday. So awesome. Well, that was what I had planned for us tonight. Um, I, I literally only grabbed the, ones that would have come with the machine, but there are lots of other ones that could have, have been purchased separately from like a singer store back in the day. <laughs> oh no. Char says in Australia, I was using the four millimeter foot for a while while I did, while I discovered it wasn't a quarter of an inch. That's a very common thing that happens actually. I'm not flying back till Saturday, so that will be good. Um, Saturday mid-morning, I head back to Sky Harbor, and then I'll get back to, uh, I have quite a, a pilgrimage, because um, I have to fly into Spokane Airport, which is actually in a different state, and then it's about an hour and a half up to where I live in Sandpoint. Monica Walker, hi. She says, hi from California. I just received my first featherweight for Christmas. Yay, welcome to the Cool Kids Club. I'm so excited. I've watched a lot of your videos already. Awesome. I would recommend to you the Featherweight University series on our YouTube channel. It has a lot of the good information for care and maintenance. Um, and then some of the idiosyncrasies of the machines. Um, I filmed I filmed two series. They're both kind of the same and they're both around January, um, January of last year and the year before. So check them out. And welcome to the Cool Kids Club, Monica. <laughs> Molly says, have a great weekend. Enjoy that good Mexican food. Girl, you know I'm going to enjoy that good Mexican food. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. All right, friends. Well, that was all I had for you tonight. I want to thank you for joining me. I will be back on on Wednesday for a work in progress. So send me your pictures. I want the pictures of the of the quilts and projects that you're working on in your featherweight this week, you can email me at info, I-N-F-O, at featherweightdoctor, all spelled out, all one word, dot com, and I will get them here in Arizona on my laptop, and you will be part of the show. Um, no sip and sew on Friday. I have a feeling I'm going to be clinically exhausted by Friday, and I'm not even going to try and rally after that last class. So we are going to have our last gathering this week on Wednesday, 4 o'clock Pacific. My in-laws are on Arizona time because they refuse to conform to the daylight savings time model. And so they had to remind me that I had to get on at 5 o'clock here <laughs> and not 4 o'clock. I would have been on an hour early if I would have gotten on on 4 o'clock. <laughs> so I'll see you at 4 o'clock Pacific, 5 o'clock if you're in Arizona on Wednesday, right here on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining me. 